Lesson number 38, I believe. On the second epistle of John, as we have gone off to speak about and to teach about the judgment seat of Christ. Event that's yet coming. Uh, we're not going to do a recap because there's the audio and video of what we have done so far. And when we turn to Second John, this is where we're, we've stopped. Verse 8, look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, worked, wrought iron, means iron that's been worked, but that we receive a full reward. And we were talking about the rewards of a Christian, and we're going into the possibility of being, well, I don't know if you want to say able, but being able to lose rewards. I don't want to lose rewards. And so what we've done, we've gone into an avenue here, taken off onto an exit. And we've gone in to explain the judgment seat of Christ. What it is. Who will be there. We explain, remember the six items. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Earnings and losses. Now what we're going to break into is that gold is things that are done for Jesus Christ. Silver is witnessing to others. They don't have to get saved. But your effort is rewarded. And precious stones for those who do get saved. And the wood, hay, and stubble are things that are lost. are done for self. And we're all going to have losses. Now, gold, silver, and precious stone. What happens to that? What's the big deal? And it's remarkable that many Christians do not know about this. Because they're so busy learning about love and peace and, and Easter bunnies and, and lilies and Santa Claus and Christmas trees and katanas and whatever you want to have. Anything but the truth of the Bible. The gold, silver, and precious stones, I'm going to say as a word that we know today, and I don't know, it's going to be exchanged for crowns. Now there are five crowns mentioned. All right. Let's see what we can get. How many crowns we can get in this time. The first crown, and these are in no particular order. The crown of glory. This is the only crown that is not for all. Not everybody is going to earn this one. We put this one first. This crown is for elders, missionaries, Now, it comes to my mind with missionaries, what if you go next door to your neighbor? What if you work your way onto the outskirts of your city? What if you work your way beyond your city limits? Now, I can say, I'm going to give a 75% be safe. That when I lived in the city of Norwich back in Connecticut, I believe 75%, if not more, that we were able, the homes that are there, we reached with the gospel in the form of gospel tracts, uh, pamphlets, New Testaments, Gospel of John. I believe. And it could be more, I don't know. 75% of Norwich we reached before we moved to Florida. And we, I've outskirts to Ledger, New London. I've had written to presidents about their soul. I've written at one point, I forget what year, but to the 50 governors of the 50 states got their address. Well, wouldn't that be considered a missionary? One that goes out 
evangelist. A man that goes out and encourages the Christians, encourages the children of God, the churches, the brethren. Brings back a report what the, of what the United States looks like. Brings back a report of, of cities that he's been in outside of America. They show, hey, pastor. And possibly other direct work, workers in the ministry or the church. Sunday school teachers. Teachers of the word. Maybe in doing videos and audios like this. I know one thing. If you don't do nothing for Christ, you're not going to get any reward, no crown. Now let's look at some verses here. 1 Peter 5.1 then we're going to open the Bible. That's where it all is. 1 Peter 5 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God. Are you feeding the flock of God? You can feed the flock of God and not be a passive of church. But let's move on. Which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not being constrained, but willingly. Are you willingly doing it or are you doing it because someone has put you in a position? See, you gotta be willing. It can't be by force, it can't be grudge. An office of the pastor can't be, oh, here I go, i got to preach another message today. you got to be willing to want to do it. It can't be like my attitude with my, my job I have. I don't like my job. you got to be wanting to do. you got to be willing to do. Not a filthy liqueur. You, you, listen, if you're in the ministry for money and fame, vast amount of people are out there, don't look for a reward from God. You're getting your reward. If you want that tax-deductible income, property, don't seek the reward because you already got it. This crown has to be to those who want and are willing and are pleased to serve God. Listen, there are people like me who want to, who are desiring, wanting the ministry, wanting to serve God. And we get upset when we see a pastor getting a pulpit and his main concern is to eat the sheep rather than to feed them. And they get up in the pulpit and they change the word of God. It's like, oh, what on earth are you doing there? I have sat under pastors that they are the rule. You didn't come to me and get my permission. You're not going to get this reward. And there are men of God out there who suffer. I listen, you have bad days, and you have terrible days, and you have valley years, months. But if you still love the Lord and still willing to put yourself as a vessel for God to be clean, to be used by Him. And some of you pastors out there are hardly getting any money of income. You're probably the worst surviving economically than the people in the church. I've had heard stories where the pastor's got to call on the congregation to, to get the ride to church to be there for Sunday. And yet he stands in that pulpit, he stands in his office, he, he stands with the congregation, he stands for, for lost souls, he stands for, for, for saved souls, all for the love of God. Here we go. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. I'm the pastor. You do what I tell you to do. Because I'm the pastor. That's why. I'm the man of God. 
Me. But being in samples to the flock. Why didn't you guys go knock on doors? When was the last time you did, Pastor? When was the last time we had a, we had an offering over? So how much did you get, Pastor? Haven't got any letters from, from anybody getting gospel tracts out. How about you, Sunday school teacher? How many gospel tracts did you get out? You are in this kind of service of the church, deacon, Sunday school teacher, pastor, evangelist, missionary. You can't tell the congregation to support another missionary if you don't. You can't support, expect them to go out and witness if you don't. You can't expect them to pay their bills if you don't. And samples. And when the chief shepherd, capital S, Jesus Christ, John 21, 15 to 17, no, shall appear. Ye, verses 1 through 3, ye, okay, the elders, among you exhort. He's also an elder, Peter, witness. Of the sufferings of Christ. Do you preach? Do you, do you remind the people of what Christ suffered? Do you have the Lord's Supper to remind of what Christ has done for you that He's coming again? To feed the flock of God. Are you feeding the flock or are you feeding off the flock? I think it's tonight's Song of Solomon. It's something we're going to talk about in verse when we put it out there. I forget what chapter we're going to do tonight. But it's something very interesting how one word can change a whole atmosphere. Feed the flock of God, not feeding off. If you add an F to that off, of, that changes the word a lot. And imagine a modern Bible that changes words all over the place. But we're not in the modern Bible. Which is among you. So your flock at home first. No matter how got 5,000 people saying downtown, amen, and your sheep are, you can see their ribs. I seen a picture the other day, I was going through the internet, of cattle in a in a drought. And they're just laying on the ground, and, and just, I mean, all you can see is hide and bones. And that is many of the sheep that are in the folds today of the churches. Yeah, listen, I've been in all kinds of churches. You get past up there with glorifying, excellent words of his university. And the people have told me, we're hungry. Brother Stalin, you, 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 wow, what you, you're amazing what you said. That teaching. And that gets pastors mad. I've got two pastors mad at me because the congregations like what I've what I've Oh, we'll move on. Which is among taking the oversight, super, super, uh, super tendency, watchful. Are you watching out, looking out for your sheep? There are churches I've been in, and there's nothing wrong, they'll call people up to the pulpit. Do you know what that person is going to say before he gets in the pulpit? Is he that trustworthy? To allow him in your pulpit before sheep that will believe anything? Now, I got recorded in my Bible, I'm not going to tell you where. I got recorded two times where out of the pulpit that was heard that Jonah did not die in that whale's belly. One was by a by a pastor of the church, and the other one was a, a church where, where a student.
Looks like we're only going to do one crown today. We only got one verse, uh, one set of verses. We got a few others to look at. You watching out for your sheep? You trying to protect them? Are you helping them? Are you praying over them? Not by constraint, force, or compelling. But willingly. We talked about that. Now let's jump down back to verse 4. When the chief shepherd Jesus Christ shall appear, ye, verses 1 through 3, shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Let's go back. Hold your place there. Let's go back to 2 John verse 8 again. But that we receive a full reward. This crown of glory does not fade away in eternity, but you can lose it by having an affair with a piano player. You can lose it by losing your sight of Christ and shutting the church down. You can lose it by having your, your, your young sheep go off to an occult. You can lose it because I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. Again, I know Christians who are not serving no more because of the pastor. Now, I can go on and on with illustrations. And let me tell you, for all those that you do feed, you will be held liable for those that you drew away. And, oh, you know, they, they weren't blah, blah, blah. They were blah, 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 blah. If you were the cause, an honest cause for that sheep and his family to leave, whatever the circumstance, you will be held liable if you are the cause. Now, they went on their own concord, okay. But they had a rightfully charge to leave the church because of you and have to go to a church that, that's failing and their lives are, 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 are nothing. You will be held accountable, Pastor. And you can make all the excuses, all the things. Again, I know three people right now that are in my prayers. They will not serve God anymore. Because of what the pastor of the church did. No more. You can't talk. You cannot. And at least no one of their lives is vile today. Growing up as a young adult. I'm not even going to give you the sex. Vile. Saved? I have no idea. If not saved, will they ever get saved? Holy Spirit will have to do the work. I'm going to tell you the pastor was wrong. That's not always the case. But we're talking about John says that we seek a full reward. I don't want you to lose. I don't want you to lose. Titus 1 5. Titus in my Bible, one of them books that I can't find. It's here. It's just whew, all these notes. I can't find it. Hard reading, so bear with me. For this cause left I, Paul, the Titus, in Crete. They're walking along, they're in Crete. Titus? Yes, Paul. Stay. All right. Give me more instructions. That thou should set in order, orderly, establish order first. Things that are wanting. And ordain elders in every city. So every city in the Bible should have a Bible-believing Church. 
Not that you have this big one church in, the, in, in the, your entire area that, that all these people have to drive. What are you going to do if, I'm not saying it's going to happen. This isn't if, I'm not prophesying. But what are you going to do if, if gasoline is gone one day? Or your congregation loses all their jobs and they can't afford their car. Where are they going to go? Let, let's say America crashes tomorrow. All right? No jobs, no car, no money. How or where are your people going to go Sunday morning to go to church? When the church doors are open, you got to be in church. What if they can't get there? I have been in all but one church here in Daytona Beach that says they're King James. All but one. I've given up on them. If everything were to shut down tomorrow, there's nothing in this area of Daytona Beach. And if you hear me, you're Daytona Beach. I ain't going to modern Bible. I ain't going nothing contemporary music. I'm going to stick to the traditional hymns and the King James 1611 Bible and the, the preaching the Lord Jesus Christ and not man. Where are people going to go? How many churches have ordained ministers in every city? Wow, look at this big city here. It, it's too far for people to go walk into that. We'll have to set another one in the city. You know America needs missionaries right in your own city? Well, we're church planters. What about at home? As I appointed thee, if any be blameless, okay, here's the qualifications, all right, blameless, without fault. You can't charge them in the ministry in their life for being wrong. Evildoers. They are honest men. Now listen, we're all sinners. The husband of one wife. Well, it rules out the Mormons, and you were going to put you were going, and some of you voted for that guy to go into the, the presidential office of a church that, you know, they don't officially, but they do multiple wives, and you match with this verse. He's got one wife, having faithful children. Not accused of riot or unruly. When I step in the church, I look at the pastor's children. I look at the children of the church. For a bishop must, he, the bishop goes back to the elder, must be blameless as the steward of God and not man. Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith is not going to run the pastor. The deacons are not going to run the bishop. Money is not going to change the message. Not self-will. You don't put yourself in the office. God does. Or mama. Or since I'm a preacher, my children have to go to my college and become preacher boys, just like I was. They got to have the calling by God themselves. Too many preachers are out there in schools today who have been called not by God. Not soon angry. Didn't say not get angry.
Not given to wine. Ooh. What do you do for the Lord's Supper? <laughs> no striker. I'm going to take this off in two avenues. He doesn't go around punching somebody. Again, I... I'll shut up. And you know what? He ought to be a worker, not a not a, a, a hold, holder of a sign that I need. Same thing. You would find both those definitions in the dictionary. I work for a union. And if they were ever called their strike, putting food on my table would have been more important than, than not being paid. Not given to fit. Matter of fact, when I get when a, an employer hires me, he wants me to work. He doesn't want me to go marching around the line. Not giving a filthy look. Oh, look at that. That showed up in Peter. The ministry is not for money. But a lover of hospitality. A lover of good men. Sober. Serious. And not drinking too much. That's another word right there you can take to Avenue with a dictionary. Just, holy, temperate. Holding fast a faithful word. So if he's got a modern Bible, he has no business being in the office of the bishop. As he has been taught. Who taught him? Find me where there were cemeteries, uh, when I say cemeteries, I mean seminaries, Bible seminaries in Titus time. You know who taught the men? Titus taught them. You know who taught Titus? Maybe Paul. You know who taught the men in the early days of the church? The apostles taught the men. And those taught the other men. And those men taught more men. And grandma and mother teach, taught Little Timothy. We send our kid off the cemetery. Why not you? We send our kid off the public school. Why not you? You mean you got a guy sitting in the pulpit and lets his kids go to a place where they teach about the Big Bang and the worship of men and not God where they don't even mention Paul? And they're going to teach about the pharaohs of Egypt. Oh, we're not going to talk about the big seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine. We're not going to mention that time found in the Bible. No. That may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Oh, look at that. You got to go after some people. And we're going to stop there. Because he's going to go on with, with a bunch of people that you're all to preach at, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the preacher, the, the bishop, the one that's going to be worthy of this crown that we call the crown of glory. We're looking at the man, the position. Look at 1 Timothy 3 1. 1 Timothy 3 1. Let's look at this man as, as worthy of this crown. Now, is the man to be 100% in this list? No, not. No one is. But it's a good list to strive for. And if you've got a man in the pulpit that loves the Lord and is serious about the Lord and keeps his life clean, and he's got some faults here, why don't you pray for the guy and help him? And think about there are, there are things that are not in the character of, the, of a man that's behind a pulpit today, and the whole church just loves him. And some are suffering because there are no men of God. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work, such as somebody like me. I love, in some kind of ministry, the Lord would have me to do. And watch how much this matches Timoth, uh, Titus. The bishop then must be blameless. That was over in Titus. The husband of one wife, Titus. Listen, you can't be having a woman at home and a woman you're shacking up with.
You can't be shacking up with a woman who's not even your wife. Vigilant. Sober. Good behavior. Given the hospitality, apt to teach. <laughs> Three quarters of the message is, is music, and then 15 minutes of what was that? Just pick a bur pick a word out of the Bible, and just run the verses with it. And what is that? Not given to wine. Not given to wine. No striker. Oh, look at that. Not greedy or filthy. Look at look at that. It showed up in three places. If you're out for money, the ministry is not your place. Your gold, silver, and precious stones is in the crowns that you earn by your service to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not what goes in your pocketbook, baby. But patient. Pray for me on that one. Not a brawler. Not covetous. That covetous runs back with it. He wants things. I want a bigger building. I want a choir. Oh, I want a school. That's covetous. One that ruins, well, his church and drives him into service. No, he don't know. I can go on that one, too, but I won't. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Look at that. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice. You need, the ministry would be the proper thing experience needed. How do you get the spirit? A preacher takes you under his arm and helps you. Can I tell you something? I have never had a preacher yet do that with me. I had a preacher put somebody else into school. It was not me. I had a preacher tell me, well, you, I didn't, you didn't talk to me first about it. And I can go on. I had a church where they brought somebody who was not even in, interested in the ministry. Bring them in. And then give them the schooling after they gave him the position. I don't care if you, I, you know who I am, I know who you are, and you don't like what I said. You know it's the truth. So, <clears throat> on you. That's what the Bible says. Not a novice. You're the one that's wrong. You in the carnival. Ooh, I think that's going to go out somewhere. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Uh, not an honest, at least he'd be filled with pride. That's never of God. And he fall in the condemnation of the devil. Ooh, ooh. Careful you put a young preacher in your pulpit, because guess who's going to show up? Pride and Satan. Now you want that in your church? Do you want Satan in the front row of your church saying, Amen, preacher, with Jesus Christ standing at the door knocking to come in? How do you do that? You put a young, stripling, of a greenhouse plant in your pulpit. I advise you not to. And then he moves on with the deacons. Read that list. Will deacons be qualified for the crown of glory if they do service to help the church? 1 Corinthians 9 9. And yep, we're going to get one crown done. We're not in a rush, are we? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be great when we talk about these crowns and have the. Have the the Lord Jesus Christ rapture is home. We stand to judge and see of Christ. And just like you were just listening, watching that video when you were called, here's the crown. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. All right. First Corinthians 9 9. For it is written in the law of Moses. Ooh, the law. 
We're not under law, we're under grace. <laughs> Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of an ox. God just called the pastor an ox. Arrgh. What a me. Go be an ox. What's an ox do? Doesn't he plow the fields? Doesn't he work the farm implements? Isn't he the bulldozer, the tractor? I know a lot of dumb ox. That treads out the corn. While the ox is doing his work. Don't bind his mouth. Let him eat. It's worthy of his hire. The deed that he's doing. Let him enjoy the food. Does God take care uh, for oxen? Look at that. If you got an ox for a preacher. God's taking care of him. You better be helping God. I would sure hate to get before the judgment seat of Christ and find out that you put a muzzle on your preacher. Ooh wee. And that preacher was an ox and God did take care of him. We love our our pastor. Pastor Appreciation Day. Yeah, really? Do you? What would the accounts at the judgment seat of Christ say? Okay. For our, uh, or say he it altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth, the pastor has to plow, we are to plow, but the pastor is to plow, shall plow in hope. And that he that thrusts, that's when you take the the wheat and you lay it out and you, you crunch it all up to separate the the, the, the seed from the, the junk, the waste, in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing that we shall reap your carnal thing? There are things your pastor needs. He needs clothes. Ooh, you don't want your pastor up there naked, do you? Oh, wait a minute. Some churches probably would. Would you like a proper Bible believing church, your pastor up there naked? Would you appreciate him up there with, with clothes that need patches and holes and buttons falling off? We're already told he's to be fed. You take care of your pastor, and he'll take care of you. And then you will watch Christ Jesus, our Lord God and Savior, who went to Calvary's cross, place a crown of glory upon your pastor's head. I hope you're part of that of your pastor being crowned by Jesus Christ if he's a faithful man. You better be part of that. Now, if you've got a worldly, carnal pastor, he's got all his rewards here on this planet Earth. He's not going to get any, and he will not get the crown of glory. He'll be bald. He's got to be the, per the proper, not perfect, I didn't mean to say that. He has to be the proper qualifications that we read. He's got to be sincere, caring, and wanting. And you've got your responsibility to help take care of him. So he can earn. It is your part to help your pastor to, to be stick to it in this. To the, to the day of his departure, his being called home to the Lord by death or by rapture, so he can earn this crown. And it's talking about sowing and reaping. Then we talk about with with. Gold is done for Jesus Christ. Silver is done for witnessing. If he witnesses, he's got silver. And those who do get saved from the work, he's got precious stones. And you helping him, he will get that to be the crown of glory. Your helping your pastor will earn him gold, silver, and precious stone in, in one big lump.
Are you a help to your pastor? Listen, you got a God fearing, God loving, and serving the Lord, and He makes mistakes, Jesse. Yes, he is a sinner just like all of us are, but He's true to the Bible. King James, He loves and He preaches a message as a pre pastor that I sit under today. You better be helping Him. You better be part of His work. You better not be muzzling Him. And you better be, when he's plowing the ground, you better be out there planting the seed behind. And you better go, Pastor, you know what? You plowed enough ground. Let me take the plow. I'll plow, and you do the seeding. Pastor, you, you worked hard to, to, this to take the water hose, and you just water. We'll go out and plow, and we'll, we'll go out and seed. Are you helping your, your pastor? John twenty one fifteen. I'm not against the the pastors are doing right. Twenty one fifteen. The pastors is there to help you, and you're there to help the pastor. So when they had dined, Jesus says to Simon Peter, that's the Simon Peter that we looked at in 1 Peter, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Pastor, do you love the Lord Jesus Christ more than the people? Because if you love God and Jesus more than you love the people, your message will be God-centered and Jesus Christ-centered. If you love the people more, you will be preaching to the people what they want so they don't leave. Because sure, we don't want that family to leave because they have got big bucks. Or you get there and you preach the message that God has laid on your heart. And if somebody leaves, they leave under their own conviction and their own thing to say, God, I don't want you. And you preach the message was to be. And you be there if they want to come back and get back in the fold and do right. You be there to guide them on how to do it. Now, they didn't leave because of you. They left because of the message that God has laid on your heart. You were faithful. He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Okay, now you love me? Feed my lambs. Action. Verb. Do. We've been reading that. He said that in First Peter. Feed the lamb. He said it to him again the second time. Years down the road in the ministry. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Thou knowest I love thee. You still love the Lord more? Are you still in the ministry because of the Lord? Feed my sheep. Have your sheep grown? They were lambs in 15. Are they grown to sheep later on? Have you fed your lambs enough? Now later on, now they're sheep. Look at that. Now watch this. He says to him, he says unto him the third time, later on down the ministry. Simon, son of Jonas, you're still the same man. Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? You love the Lord more. Later on, later on down the ministry, you love the Lord more. He said to him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Have you grown more? Have you known what more what the Lord has done and what the Lord can do? Have you grown in your ministry? Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. This do grow. 
They didn't die of malnourishment. They're still sheep. They haven't fallen away. He didn't say wolves. He didn't allow no wolves in. You started off with lambs. You fed them to sheep. You have grown. And they're still sheep. It's love with responsibility. And without responsibility, it is lust. I want the ministry for money. I want the ministry so people can call me the reverend. I call to the ministry so I can put a little placard on my car that says clergy and I can get the best parking spots at the hospital. And they can look at my car and say, there goes a man of God. There's a guy who wears his shirt on backwards. He doesn't even know what tag goes on. The tag goes in the back. do call me Father, you ain't getting no reward. You got it. Your sheep have grown from lambs. You have grown. There is the crown of glory. You need to help your preacher. You need to be thankful and thanking God for your preacher if you've got a good godly one that loves the Lord. You need to be helping and aiding him. You need to be praying for him. You need to be a sheep, not goats. You know what goats do? They butt. They take those horns and go, butt, butt, butt. Sheep. Don't butt. They run off. And Jesus said, Leave the 99 and go get that one and bring them back. That's a shepherd. The shepherd will put all his sheep into a sheep coat in the middle of the night. He'll put them in its four walls and an opening, one opening. He'll get his sheep all in there. And the shepherd will lay in front of that door, be the door. So if anybody tries to get in, they got to get over the shepherd. Anybody tries to get out, they got to get over the shepherd. Now I'm told shepherds have to go out in the fields, the next field where they send, they're going to send their sheep. They got to go looking for things that will harm the sheep. They got to go look for poison plants because the stupid sheep will eat it. Stupid sheep will pick up a gospel track that has nothing to do with uh, perverted verses, or pick up a Bible that's wrong, or get into a, a, a try to make, look into a cult that's wrong. And the pastor's got to be there. No, 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 no. That's poor. I can't even. I can't even let the sheep taste it. I got to get it out of their way before they go to it. I've got to get the poison out before the sheep take a bite. You know, poison ivy is pretty. You ever seen the leaves of poison ivy? Some of them are very pretty and very interesting. Like, oh, look at that texture. Oh, now you got the itch. You know, the pastor comes along and comes, get rid of that plant. You know what? Not only cut it down, but get rid of it because the poison's still there. I get. I don't want them to have the itch. It's a river, it's fresh water, it's good. Alright, this is good for the sheep. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, if I take them over here, there are some sheer cliffs over there. A couple of them might get a little too close and no, I'm not going to bring them there. And then, as you as sheep, you need to follow that shepherd, let that shepherd lead you, and give them some of your wool. Give them, I don't know what they call it, sheep chop, lamb chop. Give them some of your meat. Keep them warm. Keep them full. That's one crown.